Bang basically created some very simple elements like hydrogen and helium. And that material flowed out into the universe and it started forming galaxies. And when galaxies form, matter condenses and stars form. And then stars part, start producing more interesting elements like carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And those elements get thrown into the interstellar medium and things collapse and atoms collide with each other and they start forming molecules. I was uh, grew up in the 1960s in the middle of the Apollo program and it was pretty fantastic watching these big rockets go to the moon and then land on the moon so I was like I want to do something related to space when I grow up and um, I came from a science family my mother was a chemist my father was an aerospace engineer it seemed like from the early days I was going to study science or engineering. I would characterize her as a pure scientist, a, a true scientist, someone who wants to explore the unknown, um, and I really admire that about her. She wants to continue to grow. She is extraordinarily well organized as a teacher. I have worked with her students, and I've noticed how good they are. And I've also had other people say how good it is to work with former students of Lucy because they really understand what they're talking about. The molecules out in space, it's cold, it's kind of dense, but they, they rotate, okay? They're in the gas phase, they're rotating around in space, and then boom, they collide with another molecule. That pumps them up to a higher energy level, and then they spontaneously decay and emit a photon. And so we use the radio telescope to collect these photons. Now the interesting thing about molecules is depending on their number of atoms and their geometry, they emit at different frequencies or different wavelengths. And we can tune the radio telescope to those different wavelengths or different frequencies and detect different chemical compounds. It's like tuning the radio of your car, right, to different stations if you want you know, rock and roll, or you want country western. Same thing with molecules. And you're looking at the strongest one? Uh, she yeah, explained things see very clearly. Uh, she, um, okay. she has a high standard for herself as well as her students. So she expects us to do our work in time. And uh, it is, it's encouraging to see how hard she works. And it kind of motivates us to put up a similar kind of effort. Every time we think we understand something about the chemistry of our galaxy, we find out, oh, well, it's much more complicated than we thought. So, for example, you know, maybe three decades ago, they thought only some fraction of a percent of the material in our galaxy was in molecules. Now it's up to more like 50%. And, for example, the discovery of Buckminster Fullerene, C60, was a complete surprise, right? And so, we're understanding more, but I think the more we look, the more we realize we need to look harder. I am a big horseback rider. I have two horses now. I've been riding since I was eight years old. For many years, I did a lot of jumping, and now I do this sport called dressage. I actually have uh, my own little horse ranch now, after many years. So you, I've taken him out on trails. But my new horse is so, he likes to go around the neighborhood. He likes to look at all the houses and the bicyclists and everything. They're very personable animals. I really have an interdisciplinary effort here. I'm actually a split appointment between chemistry and biochemistry and astronomy. And I think, you know, these kinds of appointments can really be fruitful in terms of uh, pushing the scientific frontiers.